Many people think that a broken rice cooker is just trash, thrown away without a second thought. However, they don't realize there's one crucial part inside that's actually still very usable. So in this video, I'll take you guys apart a broken rice cooker that's said to be unusable. But make no mistake, behind its dull and completely dead appearance, it turns out there's a hidden component that's still very usable as a multi-purpose appliance. Okay, the first step we need to take is to disassemble all the parts of this broken rice cooker. From the small bolts to the internal components, we'll carefully remove them one by one. There's no need to rush, as we're only focusing on removing one part, the heating element located at the bottom. Well, this is the part that I think is really amazing, because even though the magic comm is completely dead, this element can often still function well. So, while I'm dismantling this magic comm, I want to talk a little about the importance of utilizing used items. Sometimes we don't realize how many items around the house we can actually recycle into something useful. Instead of buying new ones at the store for a hefty price, why not try making your own from old items? Besides saving money, we can also learn new things and reduce the accumulation of electronic waste. And yes, here's the main component we took from this broken rice cooker, the rice container. Many people think this part is useless, but it's actually one of the most useful parts to recycle. At the edge or bottom of this container, we make a hole using a drill. It doesn't need to be big, just enough to insert the cable. Another important thing, we'll also remove the heating element from the bottom of the magic comm. This is usually attached to the bottom and serves as the main heat source when the magic comm is still operating. Make sure the cable is connected firmly and securely, because later we will turn this part on again as a simple heating tool. Don't forget to tighten it again using the bolts. The goal is clear, to prevent this component from wobbly or accidentally coming loose during use. Now, let's draw a small pattern on the body of the container to mark the button's position. After that, we'll drill a hole according to the pattern. This will ensure the button fits snugly and doesn't wobble. It's simple, but crucial for a neat finish. Okay, now we just need to set up the on-off switch. But before you start using it, make sure all the cables are connected correctly. Don't make any misrouting, as this could cause the device to stop working or even short out. Double check each connection to ensure it's secure and secure. So, if you're curious about how I connected the cables, just watch the process here. It's not complicated, but you still have to be careful to ensure safe and long-term use. Since this plug cable has three leads, we only need two. We'll cut one wire, usually the grounding wire, because it's not needed. The important thing is that the other two wires are properly connected. Yeah. Yeah. 
And yes, now we'll cut off any unused cables and tidy them all up. To keep them safe and tidy, we'll tie them up with cable ties or electrical tape to keep everything neat and prevent them from coming loose. Don't forget to solder each cable connection. This is crucial to ensure a strong and durable connection. I also applied a glue stick to the on-off button to make it more secure and less prone to wobble. Besides making the button more stable, this also helps our device last longer. And after all the processes are complete, now it's time for us to move on to the proof part. First, let's check for any electrical leaks. Here, I'll use a test pen to ensure the parts of the electric stove we're building are safe to touch. This is crucial, so we can use this device without fear of short circuits or electric shocks. So before turning it on, make sure everything is completely safe. And, after carefully checking each part with a test pen, I was finally able to confirm there was no current leakage. This means this device is safe to use. Here, I'm trying to boil water using the device we made earlier while I'm running a stopwatch next to it. The goal is to see how quickly the water boils and to test how effective this device is. And yes, this is the electric stove we managed to make from used items. If you buy one in a store, it can be very expensive. But now you can make your own from items you no longer use. It's cheap, useful, and definitely more satisfying. Unfortunately, the pan doesn't adhere evenly to the heater. Only the center is affected. The heating component protrudes slightly upwards, so the heat isn't distributed evenly. But don't worry, we can fix this later. After 20 minutes, the water started to boil, though not fully, as the pot didn't stick properly. But at least it worked, 